Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is Layla and we're so pleased to have you here with us. But before we get into the word, we're going to take a moment and pray. Lord, we thank you for today, Lord, and we thank you for showing us your heart, Lord, and giving us the opportunity to be in your presence, Lord, and not just for the moment, but for all the days of our life, Lord. We thank you for the divine guidance that you provide for us through the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you tell us the truth and you show us things to come. Lord, we ask that you will... Give us your wisdom today, Lord, that you would show us those areas that need to be strengthened, Lord, those areas that need to be conformed to your image and your likeness, Lord. And we thank you for providing help, both your written and spoken word, to allow us to successfully complete that task, Lord. And we thank you for all good things. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. So glad to have you with us as we get into the word and continue our study in the book of first Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. So whether you're joining us for the first time or continuing with us, rejoining us, I'd just like to encourage you to pause the episode now and read through first Thessalonians chapter three, verses six through 13, just to make things easier to follow along in the discussion. Amen. 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 All right. And Now the floor is open to give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and ask any questions that you have. So who would like to begin? Well, I would. All right, honey, honey. All right. So I know I've been talking about this, um, you know, fatherly love track that the Lord is ministering here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just looking at all sides of that, the love that the Lord bestows and how he causes it to flow that is so, um, I'll say impressive to me and encouraging and inspiring because, um, I believe in the previous episode we talked about, it's the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, not just, or the God kind of love is another way of saying it, not just this love flowing to us, but the kind of love that comes from him, that when we learn to operate in it, it will distribute love appropriately in every vein that's needed. The God kind of love is able to differentiate between spousal love and parental love, um, brotherly love, um, children to their parent kind of love, uh, friend between friends love, and the love that would go towards a stranger to incorporate them in a way that isn't um, a violation of of them. Right? I wouldn't give a stranger spousal love that's for my husband only um and him for me i wouldn't give a stranger per se the love that i love my children with depending on their age right so that when we operate from the god kind of love and we let him flow through us freely he will make sure that the kind of love that comes out of us is appropriate for the situation i hope that makes sense yes um and so looking at this you know, also seeing the parental side of what he's saying in verse um, nine, for what thanks can we render to God for you, for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we may see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. Like, how can I thank God enough for you? And, you know, as a parent, as a child and as a parent, there is a special, it's a special moment when, when you can look at your children and say, I'm thankful that you're in my life. And it's not just like a a desperation, but when you see your children doing well, they're honoring God and behaving in a way that you know that it only comes from the Lord. It's not a, I'll say a sense of pride because we don't have the, like a better word for it in English that I can think of, but you feel proud of your children, but it's not pride as in haughtiness and being puffed up and prideful, but it's just a fullness, a sense of thank you, God, that Mm -hmm. you are working in my children in this way and that they are displaying the fruit that honors you, like the, the joy that comes from that. And then from a child hearing that from your parents, your parents saying, I'm proud of you, or the way the Lord said it is, I'm well pleased with you. Um, that's something that is irreplaceable in in the life of a child, hearing their, their 
their father who has such integrity, who is perfect, who is, you know what I mean? Well, for them, Paul wasn't perfect, but I'm, I'm speaking of from the Messiah to his heavenly father, Amen. us to our heavenly father. He's perfect. And for him to look at us and go, I'm well pleased with you. That does something on the inside of me as his child. It's like, yay, I can do it, Lord. Okay, we're going. And it makes me, it encourages me to do more and to press in harder to God and to be even more diligent to fulfill what he's called me to do. And it, in, in the back of my mind, it places a seed of remembrance of why I stand. And it's in addition to this is what Christ has already paid for me. It's in, in addition to I want to please the Heavenly Father, but to hear that reciprocation of I am pleasing you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yay. Let's do more. And, um, you know, seeing how the Lord is displaying that to encourage his um I'll say young believers in the things of God, younger believers, and encouraging them to continue to arise and to continue to grow in their faith and to continue to stand. And he's just filling in everything all the way around them so that they are able to flourish and to endure and to come to the the fruition of the place that the Lord has called them to and to be that fruit that remains. I just love it. And it's, you know, encouraging for me. Well, we have been talking for these past two episodes about love. And Mommy, you brought up talking about how that there are different kinds of love. And Mommy, you also brought up talking about how that we practically that we can only love those around us if we first receive the love that God gives to us. And the Lord first reminded me of I forget what it's called, but for example, a prism when light comes through it. Refraction? I don't think that's quite the word, but okay. yes, we'll go with refraction. Okay. For a light prism. Mm-hmm. And how once we allow the Holy Spirit to, for example, in this example, we are the prism. Mm-hmm. And the Holy Spirit is the one who translates the love that we receive from God and to all the different kinds and forms of love. Mm-hmm. And it's up to us to spread it out equally and listen to God to do that. And mom, you talked about how with these different kinds of love, we're able to accomplish the different roles that God has put inside of our lives that only occurs if we completely listen to the Holy Spirit and we allow the Holy Spirit to completely translate it. Mm-hmm. There, the Lord remind me of there's two main forms. There's a general love and then there's an intimate love, if that makes sense. For example, with a friend, Dave, for, Dave, sorry, David and, and Jonathan. Mm-hmm. It said David and Jonathan loved each other as friends. However, if we go further into Samuel, we, yes, further into Samuel, if we read Second Samuel, talking about Abner, there was not very much friendship. It was general. So you're saying the, the God kind of love, there is a, a layer that's, this is how you treat everyone from the God kind of love. But then there are specific categories. Like I talked about spousal love and brotherly love, where it is a, um, your literal sister, a brother, or in the friend kind of love that becomes to you as a brother, but they're still your friends. So you're saying with Jonathan and David, they went beyond just the superficial. I, I, treat you well and do unto others as I would have them do unto me. And I just give you the, from the, the foundational parts of the God kind of love, but David and Jonathan built a layer higher than that. And they were able to grow into a brotherly kind of love and affection for each other. Is that right? Yes, mommy. Okay. And they let God be the binder between them. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. And how also with the love, we also have to allow the Lord to tra- translate what's happening and show us what is really happening with Jonathan and David. Going back to that example, mm-hmm. Mom, you brought up how they're able to grow into a brotherly love because they allowed the Holy Spirit and God to show them what was happening and also to bring them together. They won't be able to do that if they hadn't had 
the Holy Spirit intervening, as in teaching and guiding them both. Mm -hmm. And they they had to certainly agree. Um, And one thing also about the God kind of love is it does not misappropriate love. It doesn't do inappropriate things, right? And the, the God kind of love fulfills the entirety of the law. All of God's requirements are fulfilled when we walk in his kind of love. Because he'll make sure that we honor our parents. He'll make sure that we love our neighbors as ourselves. He'll make sure that we um, respect and honor uh, leadership and authorities that he set into place. He'll make sure that we um, love our children appropriately and we do not intermingle the kinds of love where it's not appropriate. So my husband, my dad is my husband, so he gets spousal love, but he's also my brother in Christ, so he gets brotherly love. He also gets just the the blanket God kind of love that even a stranger or someone I didn't know, I don't have to know someone personally to give them the God kind of love. That's what we mean by the, the foundational or general sense of the God kind of love. He does get that. He also gets friendship kind of love because he fulfills each of those roles, but he doesn't love me like a child, like his child. And we don't interchange spousal love to our children. That that's inappropriate. That's a perversion of what God is saying. So the God kind of love always displays what it's right, when it's right and in line with the principles and the heart of God. So that's why it's so, it's so much easier when we're walking in life to pursue the love of God, rather than put a list of, um, don't do this, don't do that. Don't do this. Oh, don't forget to do that. You got to do this or you're going to get into trouble. If you come from the God kind of love, you'll give what you're supposed to give. You're, you'll, so or contribute to others financially or um, with your service of physical labor, what, you know, what's appropriate. You'll encourage at the right time. You'll pray at the right time. You'll fast when it's needed. You'll, you know, you'll honor the Lord and you'll fulfill the law and the prophets by moving in the love of God from that foundation. The God kind of love coming through you will fulfill all the law and the prophets rather than, you know, putting the list on the wall and trying to make sure every day you do each thing each and every single one, the more excellent way is to become perfected in the God kind of love. And then everything will work through you correctly because the Holy Spirit has free unencumbered access to display through you. That was all I had to say. All right. Well, there, there was another thing that stood out to me in this, as we're talking about love and, uh, and honey, honey, you were talking about giving what's needed when it's required. Mm-hmm. It's actually kind based of, on God's judgment. Amen. Yes, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it actually kind of builds off of um, a previous section, uh, chapter three, verses one through five, mm-hmm. where Paul, in his role as a father to uh, the those in the Thessalonians, mm-hmm. he says point blank, regardless of what's going on in his life, right? And this is in verse three, mm-hmm. right? no one should be shaken by these afflictions, right? And Mm -hmm. reminding them, hey, you saw these things happen. Mm -hmm. You you knew it was coming, Mm -hmm. not just for Paul, Mm -hmm. but for them as well. Mm -hmm. And they've already experienced these things. But then we get into this, right? We talked about this in the previous episode, how his love for a father caused him to send Timothy, who Timothy mm-hmm. had now returned to him and gave him the report, mm-hmm. right? How how are these children doing, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm children sending in your the older Lord. brother. Exactly. Yeah, right. Timothy would be an older brother. I'm sending exactly. your big brother to check on you. Right. <laughs> um, and then we get to verse 8 where he says, uh, oh, actually, verse 7, Therefore, brethren, all our afflictions and our distress, we were comforted concerning you by your faith. And he says, for now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. <clears throat> so we've been studying this because the Lord told us to study first and second. We're, mm-hmm. We'll get to that you know, when we get there, Amen. right, Thessalonians. But it's about putting all the pieces together in this process, this this thing that the Lord is leading us through to now stand or fight, mm-hmm. right? Stand mm-hmm. in your faith mm-hmm. and wage a good warfare. It's a spiritual warfare, right? Mm-hmm. But Paul is also writing and saying, hey, I understand how this can appear. Mm-hmm. Right, and so mm-hmm. he's saying, "I have concern because this is a tactic of the enemy to attempt to wear down the saints." And we mm-hmm. read about that even in the end times, right? That mm-hmm. that the adversary, Satan, uh, the anti the antichrist, will attempt to wear down the saints. He'll make war mm-hmm. with them, attempting to wear them down, so mm-hmm. they quit, they get discouraged. Right? What he's he's saying, if you stand fast, so he understands 
This is a tactic of the enemy. He's checking on them, but it, but it's also out of love right? for them, first and foremost, and their relationship with the Lord, but also is something that he is encouraging them to do, not so much for himself, but so that they, is still a teaching moment, that they recognize, hey, others around around the world are going through the same things that I'm experiencing. Mm-hmm. And he, he writes to all these different groups I mean, in, in all these letters that Paul writes. We're clearly reading about here in the Thessalonians, but he writes about it uh, to the church of Philippi and Philippians. Really in chapter 4, uh, verse 14 says, Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, he also writes about it to the Corinthians. In verse 6, Now if we're afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Mm-hmm. Or if we are comforted, it is your consolation and salvation. And, but he's talking about his hope, right? That you remain steadfast. In other words, don't get discouraged by what the enemy is attempting to do or what it appears that the people are suffering, right? This is that standing warfare part that the Lord is, is talking about. Don't go by what... Or judge by what our eyes see and our ears hear. Mm -hmm. But stand firm in the Lord on your faith. And it's something that he writes about again to in 1 Corinthians 16, 13 and 14, right? Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. Do everything in love. Mm -hmm. And so it it ties this whole thing that we're talking about, the, the love component and um, I'll say here well, as fatherly love, because we're talking about, yes, first, the Lord's love towards us, but also er, Paul's love towards these individuals, right? So mm-hmm. um, understanding a father's love, and there's both a lurking, a looking out for, but also an encouragement of, hey, you need to get to the place where you are doing this also. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just something for us to recognize, not to be... Uh, lose hope or heart, right? Mm-hmm. Because our hope isn't in what we are experiencing, mm-hmm. right? Or it's not our mind, will, or emotions. It's mm-hmm. on the word of the Lord and our faith in him, right? And not just for now and in the moment, but also mm-hmm. for our future mm-hmm. or our hope, right? Amen. Now and for throughout all eternity. Mm-hmm. So I think that's just important for us to to recognize Mm-hmm. Because there is a, a warning in there as well, all right? Like these things may happen. You may experience them. You probably will experience them mm-hmm. when you're truly being effective in warfare, because mm-hmm. that's what the enemy attempts to do. Don't be discouraged by it. Encourage others that are that are going through it, regardless of if they're above you, right? As in, as a spiritual father or whatever the case is, right? Mm-hmm. Or they are. I'll say beneath you in your maturity level as uh, a younger sibling or infants or toddlers in Christ, if you're at the adolescent or father level, right? Whatever that is, look mm-hmm. look out for them regardless of where they are in their walk with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 And then even with um, Paul sending Timothy back to check, big brother to check on what the younger brothers and sisters are doing, it, it, there is also an element of be found doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Have mm-hmm. you, you guys know, and I know myself when my mom used to leave and we were at home by ourselves, it was like, wee, you know, the, the, <laughs> the old adage, when the cat's away, the mice will play. Mm-hmm. So also that's, he's speaking to that as well. You know, are you only faithful when I'm present looking at you, when you think someone is watching or are you being faithful regardless because your heart towards God is right and you desire his purpose to be fulfilled in your life and you truly love him. So that's why he was also saying that in verse Um, seven, that they were comforted concerning them because of their faith, that they were continuing. They were, he showed up on a surprise visit, surprise inspection, and everything was well. Not only was it well, but it was flourishing and they were standing strong and had, you know, good thoughts and, you know, everything was working the way that the Lord wanted. And now it just needs more bringing it together with filling in what their faith needed to further their growth. Yes, ma'am. That's all I wanted to say. And just one more thing that I wanted to mention 
um, about verse 13, the Lord taking the time to establish their hearts, not just their, their position and their title, if you will, like we would think about, we want to be established as, you know, the head of a church or the head of a business or whatever it is. But he, the Lord, again, he's focused on the spirit, man, because that's first and that's the lasting and eternal thing. The rest of it's going away at the end of time. It is going bye bye and you will not see it again. So he's mm -hmm. taking the time to invest in what's truly worthwhile, what will actually bring some return on investment. Amen. And out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart come our, our, our words and our actions. So the Lord knows yes, it's mommy. the heart of man that needs to be towards him in order for the rest of it to work because you can placate and pretend in actions for so long, but eventually whatever's in the heart will come out. So if the heart's on God, good's going to come out. Amen. Yes, mommy. Amen. All right. We're going to, we're going to stop there for today. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we thank you for today, Lord, and we thank you for taking the time to invest in our future, Lord, to invest in our spirit, man, Lord, to train us and raise us, Lord, so that we're pleasing in your sight. And we thank you for this opportunity that we've had this morning, Lord, to look at your word, Lord, to see what you have to say about what we're going through, Lord, or what you have for us, Lord, and giving us the instruction to complete each task that you've assigned to us. Lord, we thank you for the strength to do it, Lord, the provision and, the per and your perfect timing to get it done, Lord, that you've given given us grace as well and it's sufficient for us we thank you for our partners and listeners lord we ask that you'll keep them on their way to school on their way to work to ministry wherever it is that you've called them lord and that you guide them as you already said that you would lord in jesus name amen in jesus almighty name amen and amen well, we love you god bless you and have a wonderful day want to know more about a day of prayer sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.